we are not going to be able to drive these numbers down. They are going to go up. At the moment, there are 8 million citizens who don't have a choice in how they spend their free time. That is no way to live. Let's be clear, lockdowns are still working. It's just that with Delta, they're not working nearly as well. The dotted line is where case numbers in New South Wales would be heading without stay-at-home orders and other restrictions in place. There's no doubt that the lockdowns in New South Wales have had a, a big impact. When you're dealing with exponential growth, it gets out of hand very quickly. Lockdown was a great weapon last year. It allowed Australia to achieve elimination for many, many months. But with the new Delta strain, the game has changed completely. You can see how the game has changed if we look closely at Victoria's second wave last year. Every time tougher measures were introduced, such as making masks mandatory, the growth rate fell. These restrictions eventually brought the outbreak under control. We had expected to see something similar in Sydney, but what's surprising is there's actually been no apparent in effect of each of those restrictions on the rate at which the cases are going up. One criticism levelled at New South Wales was that the state government took too long to impose a hard lockdown. If New South Wales had gone a couple of weeks earlier, there is a chance that it could have led to a COVID zero outcome. Um, but having said that, what was being called for was precisely what Victoria did do, and they also have probably missed the boat in terms of a COVID zero outcome. We may have found that whatever we did, we would be uh, in, the, in a similar situation to what we are now. One possibility is that too many people in New South Wales aren't following the rules. Mobility data across New South Wales council areas suggests that's not the case. Movement outside the home is down between 40 and 50 per cent. Professor Mikhail Prokopenko, who leads the COVID modelling group at the University of Sydney, argues that residents of New South Wales probably can't socially distance much more than they are right now. But with Delta, that's not enough to stop the spread. The Delta variant is so much more contagious and infectious that any lack of compliance with social distancing is amplified. As a result, Australia is pivoting from talk of zero spread and returning to the language of 18 months ago, which focused on protecting our frontline health workers. We anticipate that the worst month, the worst time for our intensive care pressure will be in October. Professor Alan Saul is one of Australia's most respected disease modellers. It's very pleasing to see very few people that have been doubly vaccinated in hospital, in particular in the ICU. So that's, that's a plus. I guess what worries me though, is that the cases in Sydney are doubling every 10 or 11 days. That's a phenomenally fast exponential increase. The capacity of our uh, testing and tracing and this surveillance in general is already overextended, it's stressed. And so it's getting harder and harder to curb this growth. Professor Prokopenko's modelling suggests that thanks to vaccination, case numbers in New South Wales should peak and start to decline around the beginning of October. When 80% of the adult population is fully vaccinated, the third phase of the nation's COVID-19 response kicks into gear. That's when we should see most restrictions lifted and hopefully fewer lockdowns. But there is a catch. Several models suggest that the nation will face a significant surge in case numbers. It could be 30,000 today, up to 40,000 today, according to the model. And again, these numbers are not unimaginable. If you look at uh, the Doherty Report modeling, the daily cases are also projected to reach maybe 50,000 a day, 60,000 a day. Remember, the original 80% milestone doesn't take Australians under 16 into account. Under this scenario, only about 64% of the whole population would actually be vaccinated. There's still about 40% of the community not vaccinated 
and somewhere in the vicinity of 5 million adults not vaccinated at risk of getting severe disease and dying. This, this, is, this is difficult. The Doherty modelling that underpins the federal government's COVID response suggests the risk of reopening, even with 80% of adults vaccinated, could mean we spend a third of our time in lockdown at that point. There are serious problems with that scenario, says Professor Emma McBride, who's also a prominent COVID modeler and infectious disease epidemiologist. There's been an absolute minimum effort to quantify the severe impact of lockdown on people's everyday lives. So that's things like mental health, children missing school, people losing their jobs and their livelihoods. They are a very blunt instrument and we have to reconsider, I think, all of the rules now that we're no longer trying for elimination. Which suggests that our vaccination strategy needs to be a lot more targeted than it is now to minimise the impact of this inevitable surge. The group that we have to be really concerned about are those who are very vulnerable, who if they get COVID are highly likely to die. We really need to double down and focus on those groups who are at most risk. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.